I want to introduce to you uh, Pastor Paul. Um, brother, come on up. He's going to be uh, sharing the word uh, with us today. I've tell you, be honest with you, uh, every time I've asked him to pray, I, I get so ministered uh, by the word. I've been excited and looking forward to hearing him uh, share the word with us. So, brother, uh, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Dan. Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. The word of God says he has... If they have life, let it praise the Lord. And I say, we are among the living. So we should make a noise. Make a joyful noise. And be glad when you make that noise. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to hold you up too long, but uh, I have a word for you. I'm like Jeremiah. I heard a word and it came from the Lord. Amen. And I want to share it with you because it's like fire. I can't keep it to myself. <laughs> Amen. You know, like when you strike a match, you know, and uh, the purpose for the fire is for it to be put to something. Amen. And when you put it to something, that something has to give heat. And it burns. And it gives off heat. That's how I'm this morning. And I thank God for the fire. The fire lets me know that it's another day that God has made and I am still alive. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Can you say amen? amen? If you believe what I say, give your God some praise this morning, God. Not only me, but it is you also that he had proven himself to be able. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to come from the book of Mark. You know, this morning, the 10th chapter of Mark. Begin at the 46th verse. Amen. There's a story, amen, that I'd like to share with you this morning. Out of this, this text. Amen. And this text reads as, it says here, And they came into Jericho, and as they went out, with Jesus with his disciples, the scripture says, they came, it was a crowd also there with them. But when they was on the way out, there was one called Bartimaeus, on the sidewalk, of the, he was there begging. Barnabas was blind. And what drew me to this text and what I like to pull from this text is three words. Come to Jesus. Whenever you have a problem, know that there is a problem solver who is greater than what you go through. Knowing that he has been there and he had done that too. Because he said, I was in the world, but I over Bible readers. They're not reading the Bibles. Amen. But anyway, the text tells me this to tell you all this morning that, first of all, Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. And so he did in Jericho, he's doing in Florida, Broward, Miramar today. Even somebody's home, he, he's coming. He knows your address. You don't have to put it over the doorpost or the mailbox. Jesus knows it. He said he knows the hair on your head and tell you now, he, he knows mine because I ain't got too much of it though because I'm losing it, but he knows what I have remaining. Amen. It says in the text that when he heard that it was Jesus. It says to God, it's something about that name of Jesus. When you hear the name of Jesus, it does something to you, or it should do something to you. Amen. Amen. You should get a different reaction on the inside. Amen. That's what Jeremiah says, it's like fire. Amen. It's shut in my bone. This was the case right here with Bartimaeus, the son of Tamias. Something got on the inside of him. Amen. It wasn't about begging no more, he said. He said, I know 
that I can do. Amen. But when you have done all you can do, you stand. Amen. You stand this morning, saints. You stand on that rock, that solid rock, Jesus. You stand. When everything else has forsaken you, you stand because Christ said, I always with you. I will never leave you. Bartimaeus. He kept hollering and he goes to tell me that the church, when it's a crowded church, everybody in God's house ain't for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in God's house ain't for Jesus. And I don't mean to shake up a scale, but everybody in God's house ain't going to heaven. Do you hear what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going. But you have an opportunity to make it right. Amen. By calling on the name of Jesus that like Bartimaeus did. He was a blind man, but still he had the mind that said, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thy son of David. And the church in the middle there, I don't know what was going on. It could have been a big tent meeting or a celebration of some kind, but he goes to tell me that everybody there, their mind wasn't on what he was on. Everybody's mind was on calling Jesus. But he said, Jesus, have mercy on me, giving me the indication that Jesus said, he stood still and he called him. It tells me in the spirit that Brother Mayers had a problem. His problem was blindness. What's your problem this morning? What do you need from Jesus this morning? How bad do you want it this morning? Are you willing to be talked about by your friends? Are you willing to let friends go because of your calling? As Paul has said in his Bible, in the Word of God, Paul said, I forsake all that stuff behind me. I forsake it. When friends talk about me, I forsake it. If they don't like me, I forsake it. Because I ain't worried about them because I live in my own house. You don't pay my bills. That's what Paul said. You don't pay my bills. Amen? Amen. So Paul said forsake it. And Barnabas said, Lord, I need you. I need you right now, Father, because, Lord, I, I messed up in life, Lord. I, I did wrong things, and uh, I went astray, God. But Jesus said, be a good cheer, brother. Be a good cheer. When Barnabas heard them encouraging words, amen, something happened on the inside of him. Amen. A change took place. See, when God started working, he saw from the inside out. Amen. A change started moving in, inside of him like fire. He had to pull off the begging clothes. Amen. There's something about Jesus. When he, when he calls you, amen, he, he calls you, you start denying things that you used to do because now there's a greater calling before you. A greater calling but the man came he, and the Lord said what do you need me to do he said I'm blind Lord I want my sight back I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but you've been way back too long God is calling you he has called you into a ministry but you are having all kinds of excuse this morning Lord I got to do this Lord I can't do that Lord but you got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross this morning. And you got to follow Jesus. Even though they talk about you, you got to carry your cross. They may not like you, but you got to carry your cross. They may call you everything but a child of God, but you got to carry your cross. They may tell you this and that, but you got to carry your cross. Because in the cross, Jesus said that every day it was going to be sunshine. You're going to have storms too. Like the disciples in the book of Mark 4. When Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. A storm arose. You're going to have storms falling, Jesus. And coming to Jesus. It takes me back in the book of 
Luke 15, a man that had two sons. When the younger of the son got beside himself, he said, Father, give me mine. Now he's very bold. We got some, some people today that you can come to him and say, give me mine, just like that. He like, if you get allowed to get knocked out. <laughs> Y'all know it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Times are hard now. He comes to you and says, give me mine, and here you is. Can't pay the bills already. Mortgage is due. It's threatening to turn your lights off. He said, give me mine. But the daddy didn't argue with him. Because he knew the son knew the business. He knew that he had been selling cows. He, he saw the mail when it came in. He saw the, the bank statements. He knew that something was saved up. Daddy had been saving up for his kids to go in the future to go to college uh, so they would have something when he's going on. But then this son came and he got bold and said, in his spirit, I see him saying, why don't you go ahead and die so I can get mine now? Stop putting it off, Daddy, and just go ahead and just kill over so I can go and enjoy myself. But anyway, he received his, his, his giving from the Father. And he went into a foreign land. Started living with a fast life. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And he started spending his money. Long he was spending his money, he had friends. Long he had money, you go out and you start spending your money in a nightclub, you ain't got to call nobody, they're going to come to you. When you start buying, setting up the table, buying drinks for them, they all come to him. They say, hey, y'all come over here. Party's over here. Come on over here. The young man wasn't thinking. He wasn't thinking about eating or where he's going to lay his head at that night. He didn't think about that. So anyway, a famine came into that land. Otherwise, the young man came in need. He came hungry. And the, and the one that he was spending his money on, they went to their house to eat. They didn't invite him to eat with them. He was all alone. So he went into this, hired himself to this farmer that raised his pigs. Y'all know what pigs is. You know, animals that walk in that mud, everything that drops behind them, they walk in it. And they stink. But to be honest with you, pork chops are good. Okay? Tell the truth. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Y'all know it. Y'all know that stuff that, that makes your head hurt? Yeah, go to the doctor, take a pill for it. But you still, you eat it? Oh, yes. So he went there. And being gone, grew up on a farm myself, I knew how the reaction of a hog. You put a trough close to the fence so you wouldn't have to climb over it and get into the mess. So we feed him. Then next time you come back to feed him again, that hog somehow has gotten his nose behind that trough and pushed it a way out. So, then, so you're able to reach it this time and pull it back again. And you feed him. Next time you come, sometimes they'll root it and they'll push it way out. You can't reach it. You have to get over the fence into that mess. Well, here's this young man. The first time he filled his belly because he was hungry. The second time he filled his belly, he said it's good. But the third time, he had intention in but when he went down the third time, something got a hold of him. Started getting down on his, off, his hands and his knees to, to the hogs to feed himself. He got down on his knees and he, he looked to the heaven and he said, Father, forgive me, I have sinned against you. No more, Lord, I'm worthy to be called your son. <coughs> Excuse me. Forgive me, Lord. Here to tell you this morning, no matter how far you may fall, no matter what you have 
went through, no matter how he pressed you down, God is able to reach way down and lift you up again. Amen. No, don't worry what your friends say. Mm -hmm. But you look to the hills which come as your help. Amen. And you know this day that everything you need, God got it. Amen. So no matter how your mess is, and we all got mess. We some sitting here today, we got mess. You may fool me from the outside, but God knows what's on the inside. You got mess. You hear me? So I got mess that is so old, it has decayed in our spirit. It has decayed, but I will tell you about a dentist called Jesus who was able to extract that, that decay from you. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was down there and he said something got a hold to him. He got up from there. You don't have to stay in the shape you're in. There's a story that I used to say when I preach sometimes. It says, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men, they were not able to put him together again. But I come to tell you this morning, there is someone able to put you together again. The same one that had Jeremiah on the wheel, Jeremiah said. He put me on the wheel and he turned me around and around because I had places in my, in my life that was marred because of things that I went through in this world. But God is able to make you over again. He's able to make you over again. Just keep your hands in God's hands. He's able, I tell you, saints, this morning, he'll take you, he'll spin you around and around. He's able to make that again. Because God loves you. He loves you. Like the lady with the issues of blood, she said, if I could just get close enough to touch God, if I could get close enough to touch the hem of his garment, she said, I know, I know I'll be made whole. I know I'll be healed. I know I'll be restored. I know I'll be made over. That's all you got to do this morning. But when she touched Jesus, she started shouting. She said, Hallelujah. I don't know what she said, but she said, hallelujah, something has happened to me. Something has taken place in my life. She started drying up the hemorrhaging. She started drying up and restored. Because before that, when she laid down at night, getting off into a good sleep, the issues used to kick in and, and wake her up again. Every time she lay down the next day, the issue will wake her up again because she had tried everything, everything. Saints of God, there's something you just can't buy over the counter from CBS or Walgreen. You hear what I'm saying? And the doctor can't give you a prescription for this. You got to come to Jesus for this. You got to deny yourself. So, Lord, I can't do this by myself, Lord. Lord, I need a healing, Lord. And I heard that by your stripes, I am healed. Lord, I need deliverance, Lord. And I heard, Lord, if I just cast myself upon you. And I heard, Lord. I heard, Lord. Have you heard from Jesus? Have you had a talk with him lately? Are you too busy? Have you taken time out to thank God for what he's doing in your life? Have you taken time out, amen, at home and said, Lord, I thank you for the food on my table. Have you taken time out and said, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we have food in our refrigerator, in the pantry. Have you taken time and said, Lord, I thank you for the grits you put on the table this morning. Have you taken time to say, Lord, I thank you for that toast, that butter, Lord, that juice, that milk you give me, Lord. Have you taken time out to thank God for the little things? The little things. But look at Barnabas. 
Look at Bartimaeus. A blind man. A blind man. But yet, he come to Jesus. A blind man. But yet, he come to Jesus. And today you hear the Lord's voice. Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart this morning, saints. Don't be stubborn. Don't be hard-headed. Don't be hard-headed this day. Don't pull off the day for tomorrow. Don't be sarcastic with Jesus. That Nicodemus said, I'm an old man. What do you mean? I got to go back into my mother's wounds again and be born? Being sarcastic with Jesus. And Jesus looking at him saying, <laughs> Excuse me. Jesus looked at him and said, Man, you, you really messed up. You are really messed up. You playing sarcastic with me. But saints of God, we cannot enter into glory being self. You have to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross this day and follow Christ. There are going to be rainy days. There are going to be windy days and storms. But still follow Christ. There are going to be days that you're not going to feel good. Amen. We got all type of storms in this life. We got home wrecking storms. We got marriage wrecking storms. We got, amen, war wrecking storms. We got hatred storms. We got discouraging storms. Storms that when you lay down at night, you can't fall asleep storms. Amen. Tears running down your eyes and, and no one there to wipe the tears from your eyes storms. Amen. But when you wake up in the morning, you are still tired storm. But Jesus said, if my people who are, that are called by my name this morning, here at church in the grave, if you humble yourself, seek my faith, turn from your ways, turn, he said, turn from your way, the way you used to treat people, and you know it was wrong, the way you talk about people when you know you shouldn't, and the way you used to misuse people when you know you shouldn't misuse people. When God says you should love everybody, you know what I'm talking about, y'all. You know what I'm talking about. And some of us are way down into that stuff this morning. But God said, I'm here to lift you up. Lift you up. Because of the storm. Some of us are going through a storm right now. Some of us have a sickness storm that we need Jesus to come into the storm and say, peace be still. Peace be still. And I come in the name of Jesus this morning. I bind every unclean spirit. I bind that unclean spirit in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I bind the sickness spirit. I bind the cancer spirit. I bind the affliction spirit. I bind that negative spirit. I bind that weak spirit. Because in God, he's saying your weakness, he's showing himself to be strong. I bind that weak spirit this morning. I bind that spirit of Satan this morning. Satan, you have no vacancy here. No weapon should prosper against God's people. Amen. 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 And I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus that he will open up the windows of heaven this morning. And he will rain down the letter rain upon you this morning. Because somebody here this morning on the side of my voice, 
You are in a dry place this morning. You are in a dry place and you wonder why your prayers are not being answered. You wonder why there's no growth in your home. You wonder why when you love, you're not loved back. You wonder why you try to be friendly and everybody turn their backs on you. Are you in a dry place this morning? But John 7 said, if any man thirst, Jesus said, hey, come unto me. And I'm here to tell you this morning, the water is available. Amen. The water is available. Ask the Samaritan woman. She'll tell you, I went to the well with a pot to get water. But she said, oh, Lord, she said, oh. When she looked on the well, the water she needed was sitting on the well. Do you hear what I'm saying? The water, she didn't have to draw it. It was sitting on the well. Well, all your blessing you need this morning, I'm here to tell you, it's sitting on the well. All you got, you just come and get it. It's sitting on the well. God, know you're thirsty this morning. You got to come to the well. He said, if anybody thirsts, let him come unto me. Are you thirsty this morning? Amen. Are you ready for spiritual growth this morning? Amen. Are you ready for spiritual growth this morning? Are you ready for spiritual growth this morning? Yes. If you're ready, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. I've been thirsty for a long time, Lord. Yes. But I heard about your water. Yes. Lord, I heard about your bread. <laughs> Lord, I heard about your deliverance. I heard about your healing. Uh, and Lord, I am ready. Amen. I'm ready. Amen. I'm ready. Yes, sir. I'm ready, Lord. Give me your water. Amen. Give me your water. And the Bible said when she got the water that she needed, she didn't waste no time. She's running. She said, I got to tell somebody. Right. You should be on fire to, to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for you. You should be on fire to tell somebody about Jesus, how he died on that rugged cross, how he allowed them to pierce his hands, how he allowed them to pierce his feet, how he allowed them to spear him in his side, and still he never said a mild word against us. But he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Hallelujah. 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 Bear your cross this morning. Bear your cross. <laughs> They're going to pierce your hands. Bear your cross. They're going to pierce your feet. Bear your cross. They're going to spear you on your side. Bear your cross. They're going to call you everything but a child of God. Bear your cross. They're going to tell you they, they don't love you. Bear your cross. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. When God loves you, forsake the other stuff then. Forsake it. And I love when I, my brother pastor here, Dan, talk, we're talking about the table. And I told him this morning, we were talking about, concerned about the table. When the, and the word says, in the presence of my enemies. He prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. And I said, Pastor, you know, everybody to the table is not there to eat. Everybody there ain't there to eat what's on the table. Everybody got different tastes. But in the, in the scripture, that wrong taste, I'm going to be straight with you, that wrong taste can cause you to lose your soul. The wrong taste can cause you to lose your soul. So you need to have a taste for the goodness of Jesus. He is sweet, I know. There's a saying that, come ye that love the Lord, let your joys be known. Join in the song of sweeter call and thus surround the heavenly throne. Let those who refuse to sing, who never knew our God, but the children may speak their joys abroad. Then it says on this here, it says, a charge to keep we all have. And a God we all have to glorify. 
Let Jesus be lifted. Let him be lifted in your life. Lift up Jesus. I tell you, saints, this day, come to Jesus. No matter what you've done, and what you've done, some right now are still doing, but you bring it to Jesus and leave it at his foot. He ain't going to tell your business to nobody. He ain't going to broadcast it by nobody. He's just going to say, your sins have been forgiven. Sin no more. He ain't going to run out there and put none, none of your business in the street to make it look bad. But that one sheep, Bonimaeus, God has the 99, but that one, that's why he came into Jericho. That was the purpose of him coming. Jesus knew. The disciples didn't know, but Jesus knew his obligation. Bonimaeus was there. Don't let Jesus pass you by this, this morning. Don't let him pass you, but you call out to him. Keep calling. No matter what the friends say, if somebody, if that person sitting next to you said, shut up, call in Jesus, well, you tell that person they need to move. <laughs> they need to move. If they don't want you to call Jesus, they need to move. They need to have a, a place over here for the people that, want, that, that don't want Christ. You have over here, they sit over there then. The one that want Christ, let them stay here. Because I ain't going to let nobody stop me from getting to Christ. I ain't got nothing to separate me from his love. God has been too good to me. Too good to me. And a testimony is that when I was in the hospital, I laid there on my back for a month. I had a lot of time then to think to get myself together. I, the, the devil said, well, it's over now. He'll talk to you. The devil said, it's over now. At a point, I started saying, well, but then something happened to sort of fire you on the inside of me while I was in that, in that hospital bed. Something got over inside of me and started to kindle the fire up again. And I said, the devil, use a lie. I'm going to live. I may walk with a limp now, but I thank God that I'm walking. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not like the man for 38 years who laid by the pool. Every time the angel troubled the water, they all stepped over him, and he would lay there and say, I don't guess nobody loved me. I don't guess they care. They're just stepping over me. But if he was concerned about his soul, all that time, 30 years, he could have crawled a road to the pool. You hear what I'm saying? Don't say what other people could do for you. It's things that, that you could do for yourself. You could think yourself into a healing this morning. Do you hear what I'm saying? The scripture said that once in Christ, all the old stuff is gone. It's passed away now. Right. You are a new creature. And I see the new ones upon all of you this morning. I see the new ones upon all of you. Amen. And I bind every negative spirit that's trying to come upon you. And I speak in the name of Jesus blessings over each and every one of you and your home and your family and that you will prosper that no weapon will prosper against you. Amen. And I thank God this morning for the scriptures of Bonimaeus saying that I once was blind but now I see. Also he said I was lost but now I'm found. Here I am Jesus. Can you use me? Can you use me Jesus? And some of you God had given me a minister to and you let excuses cause you not to do it. You, what, is it blindness? Is it sickness? Or is it just, I don't, I won't do? 
There are times you have to forsake going to the mall every day. I know it's some big sales you feel you're saving, but <laughs> sometimes you just have to hold that. I know there are times, fellas, that you want to pick up a club and go to the golf court every weekend and hit balls. There are times you have to lay that, that club down. Denying yourself. Romans 12 tells us that. I beseech you, that brother, for by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies unto God. Present your body. Present your body, because there's a race put before you that Hebrew 12 tells us. Seeing that we are so compared about with such great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside all this weight and everything that so easily beset us. Because we gotta run this we gotta run this morning, saints. We gotta run this race, saints. You gotta run it, saints. I can't run it for you. Your neighbors can't run it for you. The pastor can't run it for you. Only you can run this race. Some of our races is just giving God praise. Some of our races is just being a witness. Some of our races is just singing in the choir. Some of our races is just to be helpful to somebody. Some of our races just maybe just more somebody's grass that need to be cut. That's, a, that's your race. It's up to you to run it. It's up to you to run it. It's up to you to run it. Amen? Amen. 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 Say hallelujah. 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 Say so, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. And my soul be on fire. Soul be on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want to say that I thank you for the word of God that's led to my feet and led into my path. And I thank you for your pastor, Dan. Amen. 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 He's not only a friend, him and I become praying partners. Become praying partners. Amen. Amen, because we need prayer. Because the storm has taken the land. Every time you turn on the TV now, you hear this is happening. Someone is losing their life here. Someone's killing this person. This is, that's a storm, y'all. The Bible said the storm comes like a flood. But the God we know is able, and he will raise up a standard. But how, how would he raise the standard? We got to lift him up. Amen. We got to lift him up this morning. We got to lift him up and let the Lord know that we need him. So, Lord, I can't do nothing without you. Lord, this, this storm is here, Lord. I need a shelter. He'll be a shelter for you. The waters are rough, Lord. I can't cross over. He'll be a bridge for you. Just let him know that you need him. I tell you, he'll change your life. Amen. You haven't started to live until you give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. right. You have not begun to live. He will show you things. He will do things, marvelous things. He will blow your mind. Put it like this here. The Holy Ghost will rock your world. You hear me? He will rock your world. I am a living witness. He rocked my world. Not only how he rocked my world with the spiritual, but he rocked my world when he gave me a Holy Ghost wife. You hear me? When he gave me a Holy Ghost filled wife. And the steady last words to, the, to all the men. Love your wife. Amen. Love your wife. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself. Mm -hmm. If you won't hurt yourself, you won't hurt your wife. Mm -hmm. If you love yourself, you'll love your wife. Right. God had joined you together. It's a ministry. Your marriage is a ministry. Minister to one another. It, it don't only start here in the church. It's in your home. Every day that you are together, every chance you get to be with one another, tell one another that you love them. And how you thank God for one another. And God will bless your home. He will flood your home with all the blessing. Amen. Yes, he will. And you would say, Lord, I thank you for the fire, 
for the fire. Because we're all like a, a candle, a lamp that had been put on a stand. But when you put a shade over the lamp, it gives light. But when you move that shade, it brightens the room. That's how God wants us to be. If I said anything this morning to anyone that's going through a storm, Jesus said, if you come to me, I will make things all right. Amen. If you come to me, I will calm the storms in your life. All you got to do this morning, you come and give, give me your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, your, our Lord and Savior. And at that time, you give your heart back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Music. That's all you have to do, Pastor Dan. Stay with me. You come and give us your hand. In the name of Jesus, give your heart back to the Lord. Or if you need prayer, we're here to pray with you. Because where two or three have set themselves together and touch and agree, mm -hmm. God said he's in the midst. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Stand together. Amen. Hallelujah.